Hi, this is Professor Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis School of Medicine. I'm doing a video series here on our YouTube channel on different things related to stem cells and regenerative medicine. And today's video is kind of a special one. It's where I give my predictions for the new year of uh, 2024. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen of my recent blog post where I went through my predictions. And we can kind of talk through some of these and also how they reflect certain trends in the stem cell and regenerative space. So here's the top. And this is uh, just to orient you, this is my website, The Niche, which has evolved from just being a blog to also having many other resources um, yeah, as part of it. And as I said, uh, we're gonna go through my predictions for the new year. My site is at ipscell.com. So you can also go there and look at other articles can also check out my predictions for the past year 2023 and I have graded those of course you know I had to be somewhat impartial uh, on grading my own predictions but still seems like I did pretty well and I always kind of joke about looking into a crystal ball to to see these predictions and I found this image which I thought was kind of cool because I uh, I thought these little bubbles in this crystal ball almost look like cells undergoing some kind of division maybe during development or something like that all right, so let's dive right in. And I thought the first category of predictions uh, would be most appropriate to have would be this longevity space or anti-aging space. There's just been so much going on here in recent years. There's a bunch of really well-known people out there um, like Brian Johnson, uh, the Harvard professor, David Sinclair, and others who are really out there in the public domain talking about different anti-aging efforts, whether it's sort of traditional research, research or... Um, uh, like Brian Johnson's doing sort of this self-experiment, you know, trying different uh, anti-aging things and reporting in the public domain how things are going, which is really interesting. But there's a lot of hype here from the media, for instance. And last year, my uh, science hype award, which I call the Screamers, the Screamers is sort of a, a harkens back to when uh, sort of loud, big headlines and news articles were called Screamers. Anyhow, those awards went to coverage of different anti-aging efforts in that space. So I think we're going to see a lot more there. The press is going to keep loving this area. It is really interesting. And, and so I think we're going to see more developments there. We're going to see more hype, I'm sure. And as these things go on, if I'm, I'm really concerned, and this gets to the second prediction here, that someone's going to get hurt in this space because so many things are being tried whether it's um, unproven stem cells, different kinds of gene therapy, or other um, efforts that are pretty extreme in my view. And, and so I think there's some concern that whether it's one of the health celebrities, as I call them, that are more well-known for anti-aging efforts, or just an everyday person who maybe is following suit, uh, I think there's a real chance that someone's gonna get hurt in this area. And I've even written in the past how anti-aging efforts could end up being so extreme that they actually sort of paradoxically risk um, someone dying sooner than they would have if they hadn't tried to fight aging. So there's sort of a weird paradox there. <clears throat> Part of this prediction is also that we're going to continue see, to see this trend of what I would say is over-testing, like very frequent whole body scans, MRIs, other things like that, that while in theory can pick up um, things like tumors early on, they may often... Uh, identify things that are meaningless for health and lead to un unnecessary testing and stress, et cetera. So within this longevity space, we're gonna to continue to also see uh, a lot of interesting research published. And I think one of the more interesting, uh, relatively new players in this area remains Altos Labs, which is a really uh, cool kind of uh, non-conventional biotech which feels more like a research institute in, in many ways. It's uh, got a number of different locations internationally. And I had done this analysis just real quick, making a word cloud of the, the uh, titles of all their recent articles. And you can really see the emphasis from Altos on human aging and cells and, and DNA methylation here. So I think that's likely what we're gonna continue to see from Altos. There's a new player that just kind of jumped in here um, called um, Moonwalk Biosciences, which also is uh, gonna be an interesting one to watch. 
All right, we, we all know how exciting the gene editing space was in 2023. We saw approvals of Casgevy and Lifgenia. Um, this uh, Casgevy was first approved in the UK. These others were approved by the FDA in the US for sickle cell disease. And a lot of real people out there, you know, it, it's cool when science kind of goes from the lab and positively impacts real people out there who are dealing with uh, conditions like sickle cell. And so it's just been, that was such a wonderful development. I think we're gonna keep seeing positive developments in the <clears throat> gene editing and gene therapy space. Um, but along with that, you know, things are complicated. We're gonna also see potentially some adverse outcomes in people undergoing uh, experimental therapies and clinical trials, maybe even people receiving approved therapies. This is a really you know, exciting but risky space. So the risk is not unusual. It's not something that we should freak out about. It just kind of comes with the territory when you're doing these really uh, complicated, powerful therapies that, that sometimes things are gonna go wrong. So I don't think it's gonna be a perfectly smooth path in 2024 for gene therapy and gene editing. And so there's going to be ups and downs. Hopefully, we'll see more ups than downs. <clears throat> so the last few years have been really rough for the uh, stem cell and uh, just broader cell therapy and regenerative space. I think we're going to see another rough year overall for the 24 stem cell. I call them stem cell stocks that I'm following. Some of these companies are not strictly uh, stem cell companies, but they might be cell therapy or gene therapy kinds of companies. So I think, unfortunately, most of them are going to have another rough year uh, in 2024. And we've seen that in the first uh, week or so of the year, that a lot of these companies are still uh, kind of struggling. Uh, so I've listed some of those there. But I think some others are going to do really well. And it's even possible some of these um, ones that struggled in particular last year might bounce back. There's a lot of potential there for a bounce back, at least in share price, just because things have been hit so bad. Um, but I do think some others are going to do well. So I think Vertex, CRISPR Therapeutics, and Regeneron, for instance, and probably some others are going to have a good year. I'm not a stock investor. I'm not giving investing advice. So this is not advice in that regard. But I just think it's really interesting to follow these biotechs. And obviously, how they do is important for whether or not therapies ultimately get to people to help them. Uh, I, I think Neuralink, so Neuralink is this company from Elon Musk that's trying to develop uh, brain implants to help, for instance, with paralysis. And here's just a picture of their, seems to be the main implant called the N1 implant. Um, there's been uh, a lot of challenges for Neuralink in the past year or so. I think they're going to have more sort of ups and downs probably and, and possibly more downs. What they're trying to do is really, really complicated. They've had sort of a uh, a mixed track record, I would say, in terms of how things have gone in the past. And I think that's likely to continue this year. All right, let's shift gears and talk about FDA, FDA oversight of cell therapies and stem cells. So some of you may know there's this big uh, appeal pending at the Ninth Circuit Court uh, of a ruling by Judge Bernal, who's pictured here, here in uh, Federal District Court in California in which he ruled in favor of a group of um, unproven stem cell clinics called Cell Surgical Network. And uh, Bernal uh, accepted their argument that a certain kind of cellular preparation involving adipose cells called SVF was not a drug and so uh, shouldn't be regulated by the FDA in that kind of manner. I disagree. You know, I think, uh, I think Judge Bernal didn't get that right. And uh, I'm hoping, and my prediction sort of a little bit of a risky one, I guess, but I'm hoping the appeals court will kind of uh, see things the way I kind of do and, and many others do and the FDA does as well, that these preparations actually should be overseen as drugs. And this is gonna be a key ruling, whichever way it goes. So it's something that we'll have to closely follow. Uh, I've also been following for many years uh, what I see as inadequate FDA oversight of this uh, overall space in terms of unproven stem cell clinics. And by unproven here, I'm, I'm really talking about clinics that are selling things that are scientifically not proven. Uh, in some cases, they're also not FDA approved and FDA approval is required. In other cases, FDA approval as a drug is not required. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb again and be a little bit optimistic and say that we're going to see a moderate but significant uptick 
at least in FDA activity in the space and not just in the sort of perinatal or birth related element of the space. One particular area of the cell therapy arena that's been interesting but very challenging is the extracellular vesicle or exosome or EV kind of space. And, and this is an area that clinics have really grasped on to and as one that you know is highly profitable because they can make these off the shelf, uh, basically just cell condition media products uh, that they can sell for very large amounts of money. There's really not solid science to back up their use at the moment. And so I think, unfortunately, we're gonna continue to see sort of this tension between uh, the FDA and firms either producing or marketing exosomes for actual specific clinical uses uh, at per, in a for-profit kind of basis. All right, going on more in the exosome space, I think some specific firms like Direct Biologics and Chimera Labs could make some news in this area. So we'll see about that. Now shifting gears again to a very different area, and, and this is models of human embryos and actual embryos. Uh, so this is an area that has generated a lot of interest. So uh, we want to make sure we distinguish between actual human embryos, which is the point of this 13th prediction, and just models of embryos that are made from stem cells. So prediction 13 is that someone's going to grow human embryos beyond what used to be sort of the limit, which was like the 14 day rule. The 14 day rule still applies in some countries, doesn't apply in others. We don't know in, other, in still other countries whether it applies or not, but I think in some countries, researchers are really gonna push and go beyond this limit. And I thought this was gonna be the case in 2023 as well. And it might've actually happened, but we just didn't hear about it. Then in terms of the models, um, I, I think this is gonna remain a hot research area. We're gonna see more high profile papers. We're gonna see more potentially dramatic media headlines. And I mentioned that we wanna distinguish between the embryos and the embryo models, but that sort of raises the point that uh, at some point the models get so good that how do we know that they haven't really functionally become the real thing. All right, let's shift gears now to the vision research area. So here I think we're gonna get some more good news. There's a ton of research going on related to stem cells and cell therapies for various kinds of vision diseases, injuries, and other health issues. I think on the whole, we're gonna get more good news than bad in that space. There's, there's sort of been a long time coming to hear some news on RPE kind of approaches or retinal pigmented epithelial cell approaches made from either iPS cells or uh, embryonic stem cells. So hoping for some good news. Uh, we saw last year's a lot of news about biological related eye drops. I think that's gonna continue in, in this year, the FDA sort of become more aware of potential risks in that area. I think we're unfortunately also going to uh, have more cases of people who lost their vision going to unproven stem cell clinics, whether in the US or elsewhere. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, you know, and this, this vision space is sort of a good example of something that happens more broadly. And that is that you'll have an actually legitimately promising area of stem cell or cell therapy kind of research going on, like in this case for vision. And then in parallel, you sort of have this more worrisome, darker kind of echo, which is people already selling stuff like for vision loss in this case, that's really not ready for prime time and people are getting hurt from that, unfortunately. All right, finally, we are moving on to neurological conditions. And I think we're gonna have more good news here and including some encouraging news on the stem cells for Parkinson's disease front. I wouldn't be surprised if we got some good news on the paralysis front, uh, and this might relate to lineage cell therapeutics. Uh, we're also going to see uh, people publishing and arguing about, you know, do adult humans have substantial populations of stem cells in their brains or not? Do those stem cells do something unrelated to olfaction? Like, do they actually repair and help regenerate the brain? So I think that question is going to sort of pop back up. We're also going to see news related to stem cells for stroke and Alzheimer's or maybe both. And, and this has sort of been, a, a, again, sort of an on again, off again kind of area of excitement and some hype at times. But I think uh, hopefully, again, we might see more uh, positive than negative uh, developments in that space as well. All right, so those are my 20 predictions for uh, this year of 2023. Please uh, subscribe to our channel if you like this or other 
of, of the videos that I've made. And I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.